Okay, so today we're going to talk about orbitals. Um, this lesson's a little bit long, but it's going to kind of make a lot of sense in terms of how atoms are structured. So in chemistry, I know a lot of what you've seen has been an adaptation of the Bohr's model in terms of electron shells and electron configurations, and it's more of a simplistic model of how an atom looks as we understand it currently. But to actually explain the way electrons exist and behave, we use something called the quantum mechanical model. So let's write that down. We use the quantum mechanical model of the atom. to explain the way in which electrons exist and behave. Okay, so pretty much all this Super important. Now, let's write, I'm going to have a little chart right here. It'll probably help make this a little clearer. So, okay, we have matter. All right, so matter has mass. We have light. Technically, electrons do have mass, but it's very, very ma like small. So anyways, light can be categorized as it's got a wavelength. So we have wavelength. And wavelength, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the formula right now, but just so you know, it's represented by this Greek symbol, which is called, if I could draw it correctly, it's called lambda. Um, so that's kind of important. And then we have frequency. So I'm going to kind of explain like what a wave is and all that. But frequency is represented by V. Okay. So um, essentially, as the energy increases, your wavelength gets smaller and your frequency gets higher. So let's kind of draw that so as your energy increases right your wavelength goes down right it's very small and wavelength is measured in meters usually but you can change that because the metric system is awesome for that um, So we have frequency, frequency goes up, and that means that would be high. So high frequency waves are going to have more energy. Low frequency waves are going to have big wavelengths, but lower energy. So just so you know, these are inversely proportional. The reason this is important is because electrons are essentially waves. They're essentially sine waves, which look like that, if I could draw it correctly. Hang on kind of looks like this, like with little oscillations. So a frequency is saying, this is the wavelength, right? Your frequency is how many times a second it goes up and down, because it's going to oscillate between this and whatever this peak is, and whatever this peak is. So that's essentially what a sine wave is, and it's really how electrons, as we understand it, kind of look. Um, they're not just little dots in a circle. But it's really complicated, like I'm not even going to get into explaining it because there's probably more math than I even know how to explain it to you. But um, all you need to know is this, and I just wanted to give you like a little graphical representation of what this means. Because you could have, you could have another sine wave like, like 
like this. Obviously, this is not even or whatever, but has many more oscillations in a smaller space. So this one would be like a lower energy wave. And this one would be higher energy wave. And that's essentially what it is. So um, if you have any questions about that, we're going to go over that in detail when we learn how to calculate wavelength, photon energy, and all that stuff. But as of right now, that's really all you have to understand. So electrons are located in orbitals. And you're like, what does that mean? So orbitals are a way for us to explain where an electron will probably be located or where it can be. It's a probability. It's really weird. Like when you look at an elect or an atom, it's not the pretty drawing that we do with the circles and all the dots. Like that's not how it's gonna look. It's I, I don't even know how it would look. So, but that's just a way for us to explain. Like oh, look at this. It's got this many electrons. Blah 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 blah. When in reality there's a nucleus and a cloud and in that cloud you have your electrons which are essentially sine waves and they can exist anywhere in there so it, it's super super strange um but there's more and more research coming out about it but for our purposes we're going to be talking about how you can predict where an electron is based on um its quantum numbers so what that means is using this we have a high probability of finding the electron. It could, that means it's probably going to exist in this place. That makes sense. So quantum numbers are used to describe the orbital. So each electron so each electron is described by a unique set of quantum numbers. So even if you have two electrons that are right next to each other, they're still going to have a different set of quantum numbers. Okay, so what what does all this mean? If you need to pause this to copy it, go ahead. I'm going to move on. But, all right, there's four types of quantum numbers we're going to go over. You have the principal quantum number, angular quantum number, magnetic quantum number, and spin. Magnetic spin, I think. Uh, spin projection quantum number. Wow. Anyways, um, so our principal quantum number is n Hello. so our principal quantum number is essentially the period that the atom is in so it's represented by n and it can be from 1 to 7 that's it like super super simple um after this is all done, I'm going to write like a little guide to kind of make this easier. But as of right now, this should be easy. So, for example, if I ask you what is the principal quantum number of carbon and what is the principal quantum number of sodium, if you look at a periodic table, it should be 2 and 3. 2 and 3. That would be your answers because it's in those periods. So... All right, the second one is a little more complicated. Not hard, but it's just more in-depth. So you have your angular quantum number. All right, so your angular quantum number is represented by a cursive L. So it's kind of like um, a subshell 
yeah, I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. But it's going to be the main location in terms of um, – trying to think of an easier way to explain it. So anyways, I'm going to just go ahead and write the definition, and then I'll give you an example. So things that you do need to know. The value of L ranges from – So it's, it can be a range of numbers, but it's going to make more sense when we have an actual electron. Ranges from 0 to n minus 1. So say our, for example, say n was equal to 3. That means our L could be 0, 1, and 2. Um, so... I'm going to write a little chart down. So we have 4, 3, 2, and 1. And pretty much you have to, I'm, I'm only going over this for right now. If you go over 4, your L value can increase. But it's kind of pointless because um, in terms of the orbitals we're going to be using, it only goes up to 3. So. Anyways, um, you have, uh, where is it? I'm going to write it over here. Values of L. And it's going to look like a triangle. So if your value of N is 1, that means you can only have 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0. If it's 2, you can have 0 and 2 minus 1 is 1. So we can have 0 and 0. And because these are bigger than 2, you can also have the 1s there. For 3, you can have 0, 2, 3 minus 1. So 0, 1, 2. And then for 4, it would be 0, 2, 4 minus 1. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this corresponds to something. So r draw this table right here underneath. I know it's not the neatest thing ever, but we're going to make do. So... And I know it's like not on the line and it's driving me nuts, but that's fine too. So value of L type type of orbital. Okay, so you have the value of L, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So depending on where your electron is, which electron you're pointing at, um, in terms of L, is going to be where you're able to pinpoint this. So if your value of L is 0, that means the type of orbital is an s orbital. If it's 1, it's a p orbital. If it's 2, it's a d orbital. And if it's 3, it's an f orbital. So this is going to be important later when we start trying to give our electrons an address. So, all right, give you a second to copy that, just pause it, and then we're gonna keep going. All right, so three. This is the third um, quantum number. It's the magnetic quantum number. All right, so the magnetic quantum number is m sub l. That means the l is kind of like down and to the right. Um, that's all sub means. It's like a way of denoting something. Now, it's not milliliters, in case you're wondering. But it's this m, lowercase like um, cursive l, like a little bit down to the right. Now, this tells you how many orbitals you have in each type of like subshell or whatever you want to call it so how many so you can think of this as say you had okay, say you had like a p orbital but knowing that you have a p orbital 
you can have three different spots it can be in. It's like a little, it's like it's making the address more specific. So your values for m sub l, so value for m sub l is negative l to l. So it can exist in this range of numbers. So it's really simple. I'm going to ask you again, draw this table because it will make a lot more sense. Hopefully this corrects itself. Yes. I was not expecting that to happen, so that's pretty sweet. The things you get excited about. All right, so one, two, three, four. Cool. Okay, so right here we're going to do value of L. And then over here, this is just the orbital type. So you have S, D, P, P, and F. So the value of L for F is 3, 2, 1, 0. Wow, why did I write F twice? That's horrible. Man, I am like tired today. All right, so your ML value... remember is negative L to L so if your L value is 0 your ML value is going to be 0 but if it's 1 it goes from negative L to L so you go negative 1 0 1 so what do you think these two are going to be so if you think it's this I would say you are correct and then same for this one. So as the type of orbital changes, as your value of L gets bigger, the amount of slots where electrons can go gets bigger. And that's important for being able to tell where our electrons are going to be. So I'm going to go over one more, the last one. We're going to talk about some stuff, and then I'm going to give you a quick example, and we're done. So four, spin projection. This one's probably the easiest or as easy as the uh, principle. So your spin projection quantum number is denoted by M sub S. Um, so it's really, really easy. Your value is dependent on the type of half arrow you have. Your half arrows represent electrons. So you have plus one half, which is like this, or minus one half, which is like this. And it just tells us if the electron is spinning up or spinning down. Um, so I'm going to give you a little chart to kind of make this a little easier to understand. This is totally fictitious but I've been using this to explain for a few years now so N L M L M S so say you needed the address for an electron because you're sending it mail or whatever so your N would be like your county I don't know why you would put that but just so you know Oh, we're in Broward County. Um, what city are we in? We're in Cooper City. I'm going to do it for the schools like an example. So, uh, city. And then ML would be the street that we're on. And this would be the house number or address. Address number. And that's kind of how you can think about it. Like, it gets more and more specific as you keep going on, but it's able to pinpoint somewhere. So the way this works, um, first pause this and copy this because I'm going to move on. But um, the way this works is, say you needed a specific, you know, position of an electron and you needed the quantum number to tell where it was. So I'm going to do an oxygen atom. So 
I'm going to give you these quantum numbers. They're not going to mean anything to you yet, but this is kind of how these are used. You can do it either way. And on your test, I am going to definitely be asking about this because it's super important. If you master this, when you take chem in college, it's going to be super easy for you. At least one test. So we're going to do 2, 1, negative. Negative 1 and negative one half. So this is an address for an electron within this oxygen atom. So I'm going to show you. So we have one, two, one, two, three. So this would be our 1s orbital, 2s orbital, 2p orbital. So I'm going to, this is going to be in blue. So I'm going to fill this out the way it would be filled out. So two one okay cool I know which one it is. Um, okay, so oxygen has um eight electrons, I think. No 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 eight eight it's got eight valence I mean uh, six valence electrons. Wow I'm tired. So oxygen has um one two three four five six seven eight. So that's two, four, six. Oh, I guess I was right. Um, it's got eight electrons. I'm really tired. So anyways, um, what this is saying is this electron is on the second energy level, and it's within the p orbital. But within the p orbital, it's in this location because the way these work is it's negative one and zero and one. And then it's also the one that's spinning down. So it's able to tell us which electron we're looking at. Um, it's pretty exact in the way that we're able to really predict where something is or where it will be for most of the time. So we're going to go over a lot more examples in class. I just wanted to go over this real quick. But we have three more things to talk about. So... So we have the Pauli exclusion principle. So what this says is no two electrons have the same set of quantum numbers. It's impossible. No two electrons in the same atom have the same quantum numbers. OK, we have the alpha pr principle. Let me make sure I spelled that right. Hang on a second. I think it's. Uh -huh. I knew I spelled it wrong. All right, alpha. So alpha principle is orbitals of the lowest energy level are filled first. And then our last one is, oh, so let me put a little disclaimer here. In general, that means SP, let me do little arrows. But the exception to this is transition metals. So. All right, and then Hun's rule. Um, so Hun's rule says multiple orbitals of the same energy level fill one electron in each orbital before pairing. 
So And that was witnessed when I was filling out the oxygen. You could see that I was going from, if you, if you didn't notice it the first time, you could just rewind and see how I'm filling it out. I go from each orbital, you know, one at a time before I pair them up. So, of the same. And that's pretty much it for this video, so um, if you have any questions, please ask, but um, that's quantum numbers in a nutshell. We're going to definitely go more in depth in this in class because this needs a lot of practice, but I just wanted to do a quick video in case you needed to reference it. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me, but otherwise I'll see you in the next video.